what what did he work on? Just a few different instruments, laying just simple tracking? Some simple stuff. And if I remember correctly, we came in, obviously, the next night. And the next night. and He wanted to work at night always, huh? It started that way. Then it got to where we were just working all day and night sometimes. But um, I didn't know what we were working on at the time. Nobody ever did. But about the second or third day, a young woman walks in. And you've seen how big that console is. It's not very wide. She sits right beside me at the console, doesn't say a word. And he's out here because, like I said, when I started working with him, he was doing everything out here except for, uh, you know, drum machine kind of stuff. If he, if he was using a mic, he was out here, vocals or whatever. So we were recording stuff. We had laid down some things with the, the, the Oberheim. And, the, you know, he would start with the Lindrum and then we do the Oberheim. And then you put a bass on, usually in that order. I was like, why don't you do the bass second? Well, but, you know, you know, it worked. You know, who am I to say? <laughs> so she's sitting there, and she's there for hours and hours. Maybe around lunchtime, um, he takes a little break, and they talk in this area, you know, kind of between, you know, where the rooms connect. And um, she goes away. And I'm just still terrified. <laughs> like, Not even looking at what, are, what? No. Like, I don't know why you're here. I'm not even going to, I can't be distracted. You know, we're, you know, working. So had, pr- had people told you about how he was in the studio and Peggy gave you a heads a up bit. or like, yeah, don't fuck I, up or. I yeah, I kind of knew it. So the next day comes back in, sits right beside me at the console. And, uh, and I remember she's wearing like a, a white t-shirt jeans and kind of a bit of a fro. And, uh, so a couple hours go by. And I just look over at her and said, um, are you a friend of Prince? I said, oh, uh, yes, we, I, we know each other. Um, yeah. uh, and I'm so like, uh, okay, so you're just here to visit? She says, oh, well, uh, he came to a show I was doing, uh, and sent some flowers, and, uh, and then we, we, you know, we got to know each other, so he invited me down to the studio. I'm like, okay, uh, what kind of show was that? Well, and she said it in this order, I dance, sing, and play percussion for Lionel Richie. And he oh, came to that wow. show. I'm like, okay, still don't know really who she is. And then she goes away. And so around the time of the next few days, I realize we're doing the Sheila E. record. Right. <laughs> I had no idea. And... So, you know, he's putting on the tracks. And so when he was doing vocals, he was putting down the guide vocals, you know, for the song. So she knew, you know, what to sing along to. And, uh, and that's what we worked on mostly for the next couple of weeks, if wow. I remember correctly. And yes. what's incredible about those guide vocals or those demos, whatever you want to call them, is Prince never really did like halfway he recorded oh. it as if he was about to put the song out that's literally and why i thought like, yeah, erase all these vocals now she listens yeah. to sing but she's got to sing it exactly like his guide vocal and that's one of the amazing things if you talk you know like jill jones other people you hear um how hard it was sometimes to do like the same exact thing but he wanted them to do it exact right exactly yeah. and which is literally why i thought we were working on his album 